Perhaps one of the biggest breakout stories from this NBA season so far is the emergence of Anthony Simons. The meteoric rise that we've seen from him ultimately led to a difficult decision for Portland's front office. Do you keep CJ McCollum or do you trade him and fill his role with the production that we've seen from Anthony Simons? Now, here we are a week after the trade deadline, and Simons is now the full-time shooting guard, and CJ McCollum is in New Orleans. So what's led to this seemingly overnight improvement from Anthony Simons? What is he doing differently than before that's made him have so much success this season? Well, that's what we're going to talk about in today's video. As always, if you enjoy it, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Let's get right into it. Now, a lot of people prior to this season only knew about Simons from his appearance in the 2021 slam dunk contest, which he would ultimately win. But he was selected by the Trailblazers back in 2018 with Portland's 24th overall pick. Simons actually skipped college in favor of going straight to the NBA draft, so it was a bit of a question mark with what he would and wouldn't be capable of on an NBA stage. Simons' first few years in the NBA were fairly uneventful with a rookie year in which he only played 20 games and spent most of his time in the G League, and he averaged less than 10 points per game in his sophomore and junior seasons. But we fast forward to now and it's almost hard to believe that we're watching the same player. Simons over the last 20 games of the season is putting up 22.9 points per game, 6 assists, and shooting with a true shot percentage of 59.2%. This is no longer a situation where you can sit here and say, well, maybe it's just a hot streak. At this point, you have to start considering the idea that this level of play is just sustainable for him. A 20 game hot streak would be a really, really long hot streak and we don't see that happen particularly often. One of the most impressive parts of Simon's game is obviously his three point shooting ability, which should come as no surprise given that he's essentially being mentored by Damian Lillard. This mentorship is really evident in the way he plays and how he goes about creating a shot for himself beyond the arc. He's employing similar moves that Lillard often goes to to get a shot off. He does need to work on knocking down his shots coming off of screens as he's only shooting 26.1% on shots off of screens, but his ability to knock down pull-up jumpers has been really good this year. Since the new year, Simons is knocking down 38.1% of his pull-up three-point jumpers. That is the seventh highest three-point percentage on pull-up jumpers by any player attempting five or more pull-up three-pointers per game. He's really starting to become a borderline elite shot creator from beyond the arc. The little size up that he uses before getting into his shot motion is eerily similar to the one that Lillard uses. He's gotten really good at sizing up his defender and then just making a quick, unpredictable motion to get into his shot. The reason this move is so effective is because he's starting to develop into a decent finisher at the rim. When you have to worry about the threat of his drives, it makes defending him on the perimeter a much more complex task. Another shot that he loves is this sidestep, and you can tell that this is something right out of Damian Lillard's handbook. He sizes up and then jumps right into that little sidestep, step back shot, and creates a ridiculous amount of space in the process. Another really exciting aspect of his three-point shooting ability is the fact that he is a lights-out catch-and-shoot three-point shooter. He's currently shooting 45.6% on catch-and-shoot three-pointers this year. This is really promising for when Damian Lillard comes back into the lineup because you know that Anthony Simons now can create his own shot, but he can also work off-ball with Damian Lillard as a catch-and-shoot guy beyond the arc. Right now, he's one of only five players in the entire NBA that's shooting 45% or higher on catch and shoot three point shots on three and a half or more attempts per game. He's legitimately an elite catch and shoot three point guy right now. So a pairing of him and Damian Lillard is gonna be a lot of fun. And it's not just his three point shooting that's improving. His finishing ability is starting to show signs of very real progression. He's only got a field goal percentage of 56% at the rim, which isn't exactly impressive, but looking at the last 15 games, that field goal percentage jumps up to 60%, which is a pretty significant improvement. He's got some really good ball handling ability and he's got a great quick first step. The biggest thing for him is just combining those skills with getting decent at finishing around the basket. 
You can see some of that ability on display in this play. He takes Cam Johnson off the dribble with a really nice crossover and gets some distance from him. He's gonna run into JaVale McGee here and he uses some really nice footwork to get him off balance to where he can't recover. And it results in him getting a really clean look at the basket for an easy layup. A similar level of ball handling ability is on display here. He's anticipating the screen from Zeller and he gets a mismatch against Dwight Howard on the perimeter. He's just so quick that he decides he can just take him straight to the basket and he's able to get the layup off over the defenders for the bucket. He's just so shifty and crafty with his ball handling ability. He's also just stupidly fast. Once he becomes more comfortable as a finisher, he's going to be such a versatile scoring threat and he'll need to be honored from pretty much all areas of the court. Now, it's worth pointing out that he's not really attempting very many shots at the rim at all, but I still do think that this is an area of his game that we're going to see progress a lot over the coming years. And if it's something that he can add to his game and become consistent at, then it's going to make him really scary. But it's not just the scoring ability of Anthony Simons that's worth being excited about if you're a Portland fan. He's shown some incredibly promising playmaking ability that gives reason to believe there's a lot more to his game than just operating as a scoring guard. He's averaging 5.1 assists per game over the last 15 games, which doesn't really jump off the page, but the stuff that he's doing to get these assists is what's promising. He's finding cutters to the basket, making smart dump offs, and just showing that there's more than just a shooting guard in that 6-3 frame. He's got some legitimate point guard skills, which is why he was advertised as a combo guard coming out of high school. Here you can see he's mixing that craftiness and playmaking ability. He's gonna drive into the paint and start to get into that turnaround. He sees that Nurkic is there behind Taj Gibson, and he just makes a really smart quick dump off to him, and it leads to an easy basket. He's been really good at finding cutters as well. Here he's gonna take Zaire Williams off the dribble, but the Grizzlies do a really good job of deterring the layup attempt. Brown then makes a really smart cut, and Simons just dumps it off to him from midair and gets a clean look at the basket. He's good at passing out of double teams as well when getting trapped in the pick and roll. Both Bain and Adams are gonna collapse on him here when Nurkic initiates the roll. Simons takes exactly what the defense gives him and he gets Nurkic the ball into space. And despite having to battle through some defense, he's able to get the shot off and the Grizzlies get called for a goaltend. I'd still like to see a little more from him in the pick and roll because I'm not quite ready to deem him able to operate as a full-time point guard or anything just yet, but they'll have Damian Lillard back eventually, so that ultimately becomes negligible. He provides enough supplementary playmaking from your two guard spot that he can be versatile enough of an offensive threat that you don't need him to be your point man. So what does this ascent to borderline stardom for Anthony Simons mean for Blazers fans? Considering CJ McCollum is no longer part of your backcourt, I'd say that Simons is about as good of a consolation prize as you can ask for. He scratches a lot of the same itches that McCollum did, and you've got a guy who can continue to develop as a primary piece for the years when Damian Lillard is no longer part of the picture. There is a question over his contract though heading into the offseason as he's going to enter restricted free agency. It's hard to imagine another team wouldn't make a run at him. The question is how much does he get offered by another team? The Blazers can extend the qualifying offer of $5.7 million, but it seems impossible that another team won't come along and offer him more than that. Depending on how other front offices view his upside, he could probably hail anywhere from 10 to 20 million from a team that's looking for a young guard with all-star potential. There's almost no doubt in my mind that the Blazers will pay him and match whatever offer that he gets, not only because he deserves it, but because Portland needs to be mindful of the future as Damian Lillard is now approaching his mid-30s. This team has some really promising things going for them, particularly with Simons. It's tough to pinpoint exactly what his ceiling is, but it's certainly in that all-star caliber tier to me. You have to consider the fact that he's only 22 years old right now, and assuming he continues a pretty conservative development trajectory, he's on pace to be a heck of a player. So, do you think that Anthony Simons is a future all-star? Be sure to let me know in the comments below. As always, if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe and leave a like on the video because that's the number one way to help me out with the YouTube algorithm. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.